If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question first before listening on. In part A of the question, what we need to do first is calculate the resistance of the wire using the equation that relates resistance to length and the cross-sectional area of the wire. Now, the length of the wire was given to us directly, and the cross-sectional area can be determined by noting that for most wires, the shape of that wire is a cylinder, and so when it comes to the cross-sectional area, we can just simply use the cross-sectional area of a cylinder, which would be a circle, and that formula is pi r squared. Notice that the given radius is given as millimeters, so when we plug that in, we have to make it into meters by multiplying it by 10 to the minus 3. So we can go ahead and plug in all the known values. Notice that the resistivity, since this is a copper wire, will be 1.7 times 10 to the minus 8th ohm meters. That's a value that you could look up in a table that's present in the chapter. So when we plug in all the known values and compute the resistance, we get approximately 3 ohms for the resistance. And then to calculate current, we just have to remember from Ohm's law that current is equal to the potential difference across the wire divided by its resistance. The potential difference was given directly to us, so all we have to do is take that potential difference and divide it by the resistance, and we would be left with 3 amps as being the current flowing through the copper wire for part A. Now in part B, the wire is being heated from 20 degrees Celsius up to 30 degrees Celsius, and we know that when a wire is heated, its resistance is going to increase according to this equation right here. So what we have to do is plug in all the known values in this particular equation in order to calculate the new resistance. Now R0 is going to be the original resistance that we calculated earlier at 20 degrees Celsius. T0 is a reference temperature of 20 degrees. The T will be 30 degrees. And then alpha is a coefficient of resistivity, which for copper has a value of 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 inverse degrees Celsius. That's a value, again, that you could look up at 20 degrees Celsius. So with those values, we can plug in to calculate the new resistance. And when we compute that new resistance, we get approximately 3.1 ohms. Notice that the resistance did indeed increase. So with that resistance, we can go on to calculate the current that's flowing through the wire. We're going to use the same potential difference that we used in part A, and that was 9 volts, and then we'll divide it by the new resistance. And when we do that, we get a value of approximately 2.9 amps. So this would be the correct answer to part B. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for other videos. Remember, you're welcome to send in your own question to this email address, and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.